This is Teresa with My Crochet Obsession, and I just wanted to come to you today. I, I gotta tell you something funny, or at least it's funny to me. Um, I was gonna do my first live today. And you know, you can't just spring that on YouTube. You kinda have to set it up in advance. <laughs> but once it's set up, then you can do it. But uh, anyway, so that's the thing. You, uh, I'm sure you already know. I'm a new uh, content creator in the crochet community and um, I'm learning so much every day. And, I, and I, even after only, I think now three weeks, I can look back at my first videos and I laugh because I've already had a little bit of growth. And um, I appreciate your patience with me. And, uh, and I appreciate the first time I did my, my unboxing video, people told me, well, you know, you were looking down at your yarn on your desk. It'd be nice if you'd hold it up where we can see it. <laughs> anyway, I'm knocking everything off my desk. But um, anyway, it's Sunday. I just wanted to come uh, and have a chit chat. A stitch and chat would be fun on uh, sometime in the future. Wanted to tell you where um, I'm hope to have the channel go and actually I want your feedback I want you to tell me what you would like to learn how to do is there a particular project that you've just been dying to make one of and maybe we can uh, make it together so but one thing first thing that brings to mind is this shawl this uh, I made this several years ago, but I love making these shawls. Let me um, model it for you so you can see the full, the full shawl. It's huge. You can see it's more than 60 inches, but it has the flowers all over it. It has the random, corn. I call it Cornelli lace. I'm a cake decorator also and the um, really elaborate border, the flowers, and they are 3D flowers. I learned something about this though when I made it, is that these 3D flowers on this, whenever I'm wearing it, and uh, say at a restaurant and I'm sitting back in the chair, that these uh, 3D flowers can press and be a little bit uncomfortable. So the next one I make, I'm probably going to do the flat flowers. And um, now the leaves and, and the roses, you know, these were like a plique. They were sewn on. And then these leaves were sewn on. But then the stems are actual uh, slip stitched in. And so, um, and these little daisies here. That, that is a stitch. They were stitched in. They're not sewn on afterwards. I learned a lot of new skills in the making of this shawl. And I kissed a few frogs along the way. The basket stitch here, I realized how much of a yarn eater it is. Nonetheless, if you would like to make a shawl similar to this, I would love to make another one with you. I'm in a um, group of women who make prayer shawls for hospice, hospitals, uh, for bereavement, many different reasons. Um, and so uh, I make a couple of shawls every month, but I find myself, I'm kind of in a rut. I make the same um, patterns repeatedly because I'm familiar with them. But also I think it's because uh, it's faster when you're familiar with it. But one of them that I make a lot, almost fell out of my chair there, and I'm sure you've seen it, the virus shawl. I make a lot of those because once you learn it, it's easy to do. The first one of these I made, I swore to goodness I would never make another one. But I love the pattern so much, I just kept making it. And uh, then I've got another one that's kind of a mesh that if I don't have very much yarn, I make it because um, it can take a, a little bit of yarn but make a large shawl. 
Uh, but like I said, I get in a rut. I make the same thing repeatedly. I want to do something different. I want to continue to grow in my crochet journey. I wanted to just chat with you a bit and tell you about where I would, I see the channel going. The whole reason why I started it in the first place was because I just want to pass on uh, what I know. Historically, uh, those of you who have crocheted for any period of time, um, uh, prior to maybe 20 years ago, you know, you pr probably learned crochet from someone else. It was passed down from generation to generation. I learned from my aunt. She was sitting right beside me, teaching me how to hold the hook, how to hold the yarn in my left hand. Um, and in fact, let's talk about uh, holding a hook. Whenever I am with people for the first time that see me crochet, they oftentimes think that I hold my hook strange because I hold it like this and I crochet with my open palm facing me. And, but my aunt wouldn't let me hold my hook any other way. And so uh, I'm a very obedient and methodical person. So I enjoy a pattern and formulas. So whatever she told me, I just, that's what I continue to do. And it wasn't until I saw other crocheters online, on YouTube, that I saw somebody hold a hook like this, or like this, or they would crochet and take their finger and do something with the yarn here. I haven't, still haven't quite figured that out. Or I saw crocheters who, I've never seen this, uh, that they wrap the yarn more than one time around the index finger because I hadn't been around any other crocheters. I didn't know there were other ways to do things. So that's been the exciting part about um, YouTube, getting to see the way other people do things. And you know, another thing that I am really super excited about is Tunisian crochet. Until I went to YouTube, I had never heard of Tunisian crochet. And I had never even seen these hooks. But after I went back to my yarn store that I had frequented many times before I saw YouTube, there they were. And now I have three or four different ones. And I even have the one with the, I don't even know what you call it. It's got that thing hooked onto the end of it that your piece can gr grow into. You can make a large piece. I haven't used it yet, but I'm going to because I'm having a super fun time with Tunisian. I, uh, I'm a beginner at that. I mean, a, a, even a pre-beginner. I'm just barely learning, you know, I've barely learned anything, but I love it. And it, it makes such beautiful and smooth crochet fabric. I just love it. And so I'm learning that, but um, I, what I do know, I am willing to share it as far as uh, crochet and I'm passionate about free form. I've made several things, uh, free form, cardigans and shawls and scarves, but sometimes free form crochet, the individual motifs that are called scrumbles they stand alone as a little piece of art. For me, they're a little crochet meditation because uh, crochet is a form of uh, therapy for me. Uh, it, it's very good for my mental health. If I have anxiety or uh, I'm worried about anything or maybe I've got these thoughts just, you know, over and over in my head and, and no rhyme or reason, there, you know, I'm, it's anxiety. I'm just concerned about something and I need to let it go. 
I can go into my crochet space and sit in there and do some stitching and life is good. Everything's going to be all right. So, uh, I have crocheted since I was eight years old. And as I uh, may have shared before, my aunt taught me how to uh, crochet and she was right there beside me the whole time that I am learning the basics. And uh, I crocheted, uh, I, I chained for days, maybe weeks. And I would go home with my hook and my yarn at night and I would, I stayed with my aunt after school. And so when my mom would come and pick me up and we'd go home, I would make my chains and I would come back with my chains all balled up to show my aunt. And she would look at them and look at them all the way to the end, chain, the beginning chain. And then she would take the yarn and frog it all out. Now she didn't teach me the word frogging. I learned that actually since I've been um, watching YouTube. I'd never heard of that. Now, I had certainly taken out my stitches before, but I didn't know it was called frogging. And so there again, there's something I learned on YouTube. But my point in that is, um, after my aunt passed away, well then I was crocheting alone. And, um, I didn't grow. I, I kind of stuck with what was safe. I didn't challenge myself with anything new. Um, I, I was in an area where my only resource for yarn was what was available at Walmart. Um, so uh, uh, other than um, sugar and, what is that cotton call? Sugar and spice <laughs> and uh, Red Heart. I didn't know anything else about yarn. I had no other experience with it. And so having YouTube and um, learning about online resources. And so this, all these online resources and online learning is such a wonderful new um, way to approach life. And I mean, even this shawl that I love so much, it was from seeing a YouTube that I got um, into this, these kind of shawls. And I grew a lot when I made that. And uh, I've made larger blankets. I've made king size blankets in, um, in many blankets that actually are, uh, they replicate a, a, a quilt pattern. And I had quilted before, so this was very fun to put these uh, quilt blocks into a crochet uh, block and then put those together. I made a king size log cabin blanket. Very colorful, very large. That took me two years to do uh, stitching, you know, just at night in front of the TV. And uh, king size though is, that's big. And it took me two years to do it, but I'm very proud of it. And it is super warm. And uh, so, but there again, um, if I hadn't found the online community through YouTube, I don't think I would have grown. I would have uh, still been limited to um, the yarns that were readily available to me and not experimented with other yarns. Speaking of that, I got something, I did something else new for the first time. You know, I, I have crocheted from patterns, of course. I have millions of pattern books and, and some patterns that are free online. I would uh, download those, but I had never ordered a kit before. Uh, you know, that has the pattern and the yarn with it. I'd never done that before. Well, a few weeks ago, no, it's been a month or so ago. Mary Maxim ran a sale, 67% off of her kits. Well, the price 
was cheaper than what I could just buy the yarn. So I bought this beautiful kit and I love this, I love the yarn. Let me talk about the yarn first. Beautiful yarn, the color, I believe they call it denim. Yeah, denim. And it is a, a twisted yarn with blue and white and it's called rag therefore the this uh silhouette here is called the rag poncho and the thing i loved about it is that it's a poncho with sleeves and i think that's one of the coolest thing i've seen several of them on youtube and i thought i really really want one of those the thing i love about it but um because it, it, those of you that have worn ponchos, you know that if it's a one of the one with the four points, that point there that's where your sleeve is, that's always getting into something. I mean, if I wear it at a restaurant, I have to have a wrap on all the time because I'm always cold. It doesn't matter what season it is. So, but that that point that's over your arm there, it's getting in your food, you know. So I think that this silhouette with a poncho with sleeves is just, wow. Somebody was really smart that thought that up. But I got this and I didn't read very well. I got so excited about the silhouette. I didn't read very well on the website before I ordered this. This is knitted. I don't knit. I would love to learn, but, it, but I don't think this is a beginner knitting project so um anyway i at least i bought a kit <laughs> for the first time i can't make it I, I don't think but anyway i have some friends that knit i will check with them and see if if i can knit or not if not maybe i can get them to knit it for me and pay them to do that but there again um, a kit with the, the pattern and the yarn. I've never bought that before. Uh, I don't even know that I knew they were available until, you know, about 10, 12 years ago when I started watching crochet on YouTube. Another thing that I like to do that I'm really passionate about is I love to see things in department stores that are crocheted and I saw this sweater in Italy that was 1,245 US dollars. I realize this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I love freeform wearable art. And it was a freeform sweater, but simple stitches. And I thought, I can make that. And uh, I took some pictures and uh, I'm gonna make it. It And um, this past Christmas season, I saw this hat and scarf. In fact, I had it on um, my the uh, video on making the mystery yarn. I had uh, some snapshots of that sweater and cap. I saw that and, uh, you know, the scarf was over, um, Two hundred dollars, and I said, I can make that. And even for me to make it in merino wool, I could make it for far less than two hundred dollars. Now I understand the concept of being made and paying the person to make it, and then converting that to a retail price. I get that. I get it. But I'm frugal enough that I like to look at designer things in the department stores and make it myself. A few years ago, Dolce & Gabbana, their um, runways were covered with uh, granny square skirts and little uh, bolero tops and uh, dresses, and those were over $1,000. Uh, I mean, just the skirt, I think, was like 839 And yeah, all of us with minimal amount of skills could probably make it 
but it's very labor intensive and it takes a long time as all, all of us know. And whenever we buy crochet items in a department store, all of that is factored into that price as well as the actual fabrication, you know, what kind of yarn it's made from. All right. One, I guess my mission statement for the channel is that um, I just love passing on what I know about crochet because of the way historically that crochet was taught and handed down to the next generation. That's what I want to do. As well as I enjoy learning from the other creators. Like I said, I have um, been exposed to Tunisian crochet and um, just love it. And I had never heard of it before the uh, going on to YouTube. And so that's what I, my goal for the channel is to um, give what I know and in exchange, I, I hope that in the community that we will all exchange ideas and be open to um, the suggestions and the ideas of others and not think that, uh, you know, I was so excited when I found out that there's different ways to hold the hook. In fact, you know, today I don't hold my hook just the way that my aunt taught me. I don't always hold my hook like this. Sometimes, especially if I'm using a really big hook, like a Q hook, especially, even this one. If I were to be doing this with three or four strands of yarn to make a blanket, I, I use my hook like this. I'd always avoided those hooks prior to learning different ways to hand, hold the hook. I'd always avoided them because you can't hold it like this. The Q hook. You can't hold this like this and, and work with that big yarn. I did an entire rug made out of sheets, strips of sheets. I tore them up and made a rug. And there is no way I could have done it like this. But I didn't know there was another way to hold it. And so I was able to make that rug. And of course, I held my hook like this. But even um, now, whenever I'm making something out of uh, yarn, depending on what I'm trying to do. Now, sometimes I'll hold my hook, um, you know, pencil. Sometimes I hold it knife. And then other times, if I'm, I'll just hold it my aunt's way. So... Um, there again, I go on and on and on, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited about um, sharing and I'm excited about learning what others bring to the table also. And uh, where, what's coming up soon is I'm uh, still working and I almost am ready to um, release a video that uses the daisy squares. And uh, I had I put a playlist of the Daisy Square project I'm calling it because I'm, there's several things going to come out using these Daisy Squares. Uh, I've got to tell you, I love these Daisy Squares. I love daisies, and um, so they make me happy every time I see them. And so every uh, I am. Uh, coming out with my first pullover sweater that also uses the hexagon uh, sweater technique, but I had trouble with my hexagons. I started about 10 years ago making hexagon sweaters, but I had some problems getting it to lay right, and it was because of the corners. And also, there was bulk under the armpit because of the way the hexagon started. So I made some modifications that I'm gonna share um, in whenever I present that. Now it's possible that there's someone else that came up with a solution that was like mine, or maybe it's even different for the same problems, but I haven't seen it. So I don't, don't 
think for a moment that I think I'm all that because I came up with this way to make a hexagon. No, I am presenting the way I solved a problem that I had in uh, my crochet silhouette. And um, hopefully if you're having that same problem, then you will try that and I hope it will solve uh, the issue for you too. So uh, another thing that's coming on board is that kaleidoscope sweater. Uh, I'm uh, still in, it's still in progress. And as I have worked with it, I've made modifications because when I got it all assembled, it was too busy for me. And so I'm not doing the sleeves in the squares because that was just too much for me. Too much, too much busyness. I needed an area where the, as you're looking at the entire piece that where your eyes could rest because it was just, you know, just too busy. So uh, that's kind of slowed up the progress of that. But nonetheless, the daisy is coming up next and uh, Freeform Fridays are still rolling. I'm wrapping up the piece that I started in February and starting a new um, silhouette for the Freeform uh, this week. And the Take a Stitch Tuesday is will continue. And then as quickly as possible, I'm going to add uh, Crochet School, which will, and, and that'll be a playlist, which will, um, bring all the basic stitches and how to learn. I wasn't going to do that, quite honestly, because there are already hundreds of videos out there that are the basic stitches and how to do a granny square and this and that and the other. And then my um, coach, I have a coach for the, um, for YouTube, said that, yes, I should. Uh, put those basic stitches and how to learn crochet, even though there were hundreds of videos already out there, because each one of us present the material and demonstrate it in a different way. So I might say it in a way that makes it click for someone who was struggling with it before, because all teachers teach differently and even for them to see the way I hold the hook, even though they may not hold the hook that way, it something may click. They may have that aha experience. So, um, you know, she's the expert. So I do what I'm told. And there again, that's the way we learn. That's the way I'm learning. And please give me a, a comment. Tell me what you would like to see. Tell me if you would like to make one of these shawls. Do you even wear shawls anymore? Am I the only one that wears neck warmers and shawls all year long? <laughs> give me some feedback. Tell me where you would, what you would like to do. Uh, what is uh, your long-term crochet goal? Where do you want to go? How do you want to level up your crochet experience? Let me know in the comments. And until I see you again, keep calm and crochet on.